Hello everyone and welcome back to Bookish Ramblings. This is Recent Reads number three. So first we'll just start off with the one and only ebook that I read and the only book that I don't have the physical book to show you today and that is Point of Danger by Irene Hannon. This is book one in the Triple Threat trilogy and this was our book club pick for last month so I'm very proud of myself for actually reading it. This is Romantic Suspense and I'm trying to remember what happened in this book. So our main character, her name is Eve Riley, and she is a radio shock talk, radio talk show. <laughs> our main character is Eve Riley, and she is a radio talk show host, and she has like very conservative views, like pro-life things like that. Um, and so she gets a lot of disgruntled like listeners that call in and she gets like, you know, a lot of hate for her beliefs. Things take a very dangerous, sinister like turn when she comes home one day and there's like a bomb on her front porch. So she calls the police, they come, and she ends up meeting this detective whose name uh, oh, Brent and a romance starts developing between the two of them, as it always does in these suspense novels. So they're just trying to figure out who is sending these threats and who is, like, trying to kill her before it's too late. So I thought this book was just kind of meh. Um, I gave it three out of five stars. Like, it was alright, but... It wasn't that great. I wasn't a huge fan of the romance. It was just kind of there and I just didn't care about it. Um, I didn't particularly love any of the characters. One of the points of view that you read from several times, his name is Steve and honestly I did come close to DNFing this book because uh, Steve is a very like emotionally abusive, selfish, nasty person and he is married, him and his wife are like newlyweds, and she's a really sweet person, but she just lets people like walk all over her and let Steve manipulate her, and I felt really bad for her, and I just hated all the scenes where he was just being manipulative and treating her badly just because he could and purposely like scaring her into doing what he wanted, and I just really hated that a lot. It was, it was hard to read, honestly, and I was just like, Ugh, like I hated it so much and I didn't like reading it. It was very uncomfortable and so I almost DNF'd it because of Steve. But um, I pushed through and finished the book because I just really wanted to finish it um, and see like who was the bad guy <laughs> because I wasn't sure. Like everybody looked so suspicious. So I finished it but it was just alright. It was somebody that for like a split second I did suspect and I was like, no, no way, it's not this person. And then it actually turned out to be that person. I don't plan to continue the series, it just wasn't good enough for that um, to me personally. So yeah, just three stars. By the way, if you're wondering what happened to my arm, I just, I burned myself at work on the waffle iron. So just ignore that. So next I read the Dreamhouse Kings series. Um, all the books except for the final book six. Um, I don't own that one. I've got to order it. So I read books one through five. So we have House of Dark Shadows is book one. Then Watcher in the Woods is book two. Gatekeepers is book three. And then we have Timescape and then Whirlwind. Oh my gosh, I just went through an entire summary and giving my thoughts about this series and then realized that my camera didn't record any of it because the battery died. Ugh. Now I have to go through all again. Okay, I can do this again. Why is it always a struggle? Take two. So these books are about the King family and the family consists of a mom, a dad, and three siblings. The siblings are Xander, he's 15, he's the oldest. David is 12 and Toria, the youngest sister, she is I think nine years old. This family moves from LA to some place called Pinedale. It's a secluded small town. They move for their dad's work. Um, he's going to be a principal at this new school that the kids are going to go to. So they move to this town and they end up moving into this really old, creepy, abandoned, supposedly haunted Victorian style home. There's like these rumors about the last family that ever lived there and how the dad went insane and slaughtered his entire family and then disappeared and the house has been abandoned ever since. So the family decides that this is the perfect house for them and they move in but some weird things start immediately happening. They're appropriately like freaked out about the whole thing, mostly the kids, but for whatever reason the parents decide to stick it out and stay there. So like I want to tell you some more things but I feel like it's kind of spoilery just because 
it doesn't happen till like way into the book but it is on the back cover and I feel like I need to tell you for you to actually be interested in the series but it just feels like revealing so much. I will just say it this book or the series does involve some time travel and that's all I'm going to say about that. Things don't really get exciting and get going and the time travel time travel element doesn't really come in till farther into the book but I still enjoyed the whole thing regardless I know some people on Goodreads said that the very beginning was like really boring but I didn't think so I also want to say that even though these covers look um pretty ominous and like they might be horror books that they're really not and these I'm not sure if this series is technically middle grade or YA because I've seen it labeled as both in different places and by different people so I'm not sure I feel like this series could be middle grade except for the fact that it is so violent and the violence and blood and even like gruesome moments just escalate as the series goes. So I feel like really young middle graders, maybe the series is not the best for them. I just feel like it's too violent for young kids. So I would say maybe upper middle grade and YA would be the better target audience for these books. But me, as a person in their mid-twenties, fully haven't been enjoying this series. I gave book one four out of four and a half stars, book two four and a half stars, and if I'm not mistaken, I gave the other three books four stars. This book is mostly told from Xander's perspective, the 15-year-old, and the one thing that I didn't really like about this book was that he's like an aspiring like filmmaker director whatever and so he references movies constantly throughout the book which in and of itself I don't mind I just don't like the fact that he was referencing a lot of horror movies just because the house is creepy so he's always relating things to scary movies that he's seen I didn't like that part but it wasn't really a big deal and other than that like I fully enjoyed this book and then from book two on it's mostly told from David's perspective, the younger brother, with a few other perspectives thrown in, like there might be a chapter here and there by someone else, but mostly David. And David definitely became my favorite character throughout this series. He's a really sweet kid, he has a good heart, and I just really liked him a lot. So I'm actually glad that most of the series is told from his perspective. And I really, really like how close the King family is to each other. I just really appreciate that because I feel like that's not really in books enough. My favorite part was David and Xander's relationship with each other. Just seeing them as as brothers, how they get along, and even how they like fight sometimes, or just boys acting like boys. It was just very entertaining. It's been a very good series. I love seeing like the different times and places that the characters get to travel to. It's really cool. The most annoying character in the series is the dad, just because he makes really stupid decisions, but at the same time, if he didn't make those decisions, we wouldn't have a series to read. So I guess it kind of like had to happen but yeah he was just dumb next I'm going to talk about replication by Jill Williamson this is a standalone Christian YA novel this is about a guy his name is Martyr and well that's like his nickname he lives at Jason Farms which is like this underground facility where there is like a bunch of clones he's been told him and the other clones that they've been created to save humanity somehow they've been told that the outside world is like toxic and so that's why they're underground where it's safe our other character is abby goyer her and her father have just moved to alaska for her father's work he's like a scientist whatever but his work is like really sketchy and secretive and he won't really tell her anything about it but he's been involved in some like sketchy stuff in the past so she knows that him being secret is not a good sign and she knows that her dad is probably up to something that's like illegal or immoral and she wants to find out what it is so she's um, adjusting to a new high school and moving so far away from home and then you know trying to figure out like what her dad is doing so Abby and Martyr end up meeting each other and she wants to help him I gave it three out of five stars this go around I can't remember what I gave it last time yeah like it's pretty good I don't I don't really have a lot to say about this. The way it ended, you know, it seems like a happy ending, but I'm like, in reality, I don't think it would be that easy at the end, which is what I thought the first time I read it. But at the same time, it's a standalone novel and it's not that long, so to really get into what happens afterwards realistically like you would have to have another book so like I understand it ending the way it did so like yeah it was pretty good it just wasn't like great I feel like it could have been better you know I should probably give it like three and a half stars 
to be more fair. Anyways, let's get on to the final book of the wrap up. And that is Dykin's Heir by J.L. Knight. This is book six, the final novel in my favorite series ever, The Ilion Chronicles. And this book just released last month, and so I did a whole reading vlog about it. I'll put the link up here if you haven't seen it. It's a spoiler-free vlog, by the way. But you've heard me talk about this series a lot. It's a Christian, medieval, non-magical fantasy series. This book is just like the culmination of everything, the final battle, facing down the evil empress and all that stuff. So it was really good. And it was a very... It was a nice conclusion to the series. Um, after reflecting on it for quite a while, I didn't say this in my vlog, but I've had a lot of time to really reflect and think about exactly how I feel. And the on literally the only complaint that I have about this book, well, first of all, just that it's the last one, so now it's over, and that's really depressing. But secondly, just that it almost feels like the stuff, how things wrapped up almost seemed a little too perfect, that it was almost like cheesy almost, you know? Like I think there should have been some bigger repercussions for some characters' actions. But other than that, like I really can't complain. It took me a little bit of time to like get into it in the beginning just because it was really weird reading something new in this series and about the characters and I had just been rereading books for so long so it was kind of weird but I got into it and then it was really great and so many sweet moments. I cried a little bit at the end because it was so good and the the ending was like so sweet and satisfying but at the same time like the journey is over and I was just thinking about like how far all the characters had come so like I was happy and sad. But yeah it was really good. I gave it like five out of five stars obviously. Highly recommend the series. You guys should read it. That is all the books that I have to talk about today. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know down in the comments if you've read any of these books and what you thought of them and let me know about maybe your most recent read and your thoughts about it. I love to chat with you in the comments. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!